As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a time traveler. And it wasn't until I got my first telescope that I saw this idea become much more of reality than I ever thought was possible. Right now it's mid-April, and that means lots of rain, cloudy nights, and the winter Milky Way objects setting every evening with the sun, leaving us well into galaxy season. In the past four or five years that I've been doing astrophotography, this has usually been a really challenging time of the year for me. And that's mainly because up until now, I only had one telescope, a William Optic Z61, and that limited me to a 360 millimeter focal length. And there's not a whole lot of objects during galaxy season that I can really do justice to with such a wide field scope. And this usually means that every galaxy season, I end up shooting the same stuff over and over again. However, I do still think the Z61 is probably one of the best beginner scopes you could possibly put your money towards. It's really affordable, and the results speak for themselves. However, in the last year or so, I've really found myself wanting more. As is pretty typical with astrophotography, this led me down a deep rabbit hole in trying to decide what would be the best option for my needs as an upgrade. Do I stick with what I know and get another refractor? Or do I check out something new like a Newtonian or an SCT? Or maybe even go all out and buy a Rasa 11 and make the most of the minimal clear nights I have with some high speed imaging. No matter how I looked at the situation, it sounded like it was going to be a pretty pricey upgrade. So I really needed to take some time and decide what would be the right option for me. I started this process probably two years ago, and it wasn't until seven or eight months ago that I started to see the first reviews for a new refractor, the Ascar 103. Right away I was really interested in this scope because it was so versatile. It had multiple options for flatteners and reducers, and part of the OTA could even be disassembled and paired with a .6 reducer to get you all the way down to 420 millimeters focal length at f4. It sounded like this scope would be perfect for my needs. It would almost double my effective focal length to 700 millimeters, and paired with that 0.6 reducer would give me some awesome options for wide field fast imaging. So about a month ago, I finally convinced myself to pull the trigger, and I ordered an Ascar 103 triplet along with the one times field flattener and the 0.6 times reducer. Now let's dive into the rig a little deeper and check it out in action. Here it is, the Ascar 103, sitting on top of the trusty Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. Everything's being controlled by the ASI Air Plus mounted right here on the top. I've got the 1.0 field flattener installed right now, right in front of the ZWO filter drawer, which inside has an Opelong L Pro. ASI 294MC Pro on the back, and I also picked up a William Optics 50 millimeter guide scope so that everything would jive with the new 700 millimeter focal length that I'd be working with. Still using the old ASI 120mm mini on the back. I also picked up one of these ZWO 12 volt DC to RCA splitter cables so that I can run my new do not heaters because I was just using some cheap USB powered ones that had no options. They were just, you plug them in and turn them on and that was it. I also picked up these uh, nice 3D printed um, cable organizers from Buckeye Stargazing. And one of my favorite additions is the new ZWO EAF mounted down here. Um, sounds like it's focusing right now actually, pretty cool. The EAF was a total game changer for me because I no longer have to rely on myself for perfect focus. I always used the Batonov mask that comes with the Z61, but it did leave a lot to be desired. I could just never truly tell if I was getting things as sharp as they could be, and I also had to check focus three or four times a night. Right now I have it set to autofocus before any auto run sequence of images, and then it will refocus every 30 minutes throughout the sequence after that. That might sound a little overkill, but with the constant changing temperatures here near the coast, the peace of mind it provides is truly awesome. I also appreciate how easy it was to set up. All this new technology can oftentimes be intimidating, but all I had to do was take it out of the box, attach it to the scope, roughly focus, and the ASI Air did the rest. 
Go figure that as soon as the scope showed up, it was nothing but cloudy skies for at least two weeks. In that time, you could often find me on my computer in Stellarium, checking out my new field of view, hopping around to different objects, and looking for my next target when the first clear night rolled around. Like I mentioned earlier, I missed out on the opportunity to use the new setup for a lot of the winter Milky Way targets, but I did have a few galaxies lined up for the first clear night. And in the two or three weeks since the scope showed up, I've shot probably seven or eight different galaxies. I'm definitely not a professional by any stretch of the imagination. So every clear night I get, I try to end up with a finished image from that session. With that being said, most of these shots range from three to maybe seven hours of total integration, with a few of them being closer to the 10 hour mark. For every photo that I'm gonna show you, I used 180 second sub exposures at gain 120 on the 294. I've had this camera for about three or four years now, and I've used those same settings for almost all of my broadband work in that time period. The results have always been pretty awesome, but I was a little worried considering the new scope was f7 versus the f5.9 that I've been used to for the past five years. I would have loved to have spent two or three nights on each of these targets to really bring them to life, but like I said, I had that new scope excitement going on, especially during such an unfamiliar time of the year to me where normally I don't have much to shoot at all. I've had so much fun hopping around the sky and exploring all these new objects, even just getting a couple minutes on a few things that I've never seen before. Although it's been really exciting, it's also been really challenging. Like I mentioned, living near the coast this time of year, there's so much rain and cloudy nights, and every clear night I do have usually coincides with a nearly full moon. I definitely wouldn't call this a review of the Ascar 103. Maybe that'll come down the road once I have some more time to spend with it. For some of these shots, I also utilized an Optolong L-Pro light pollution filter. I'm pretty lucky in that I live in a Bortle 3 or 4 zone, but there are a lot of street lights and house lights in the area that can really drown out the beauty of the night sky. That, in combination with the bright moonlight, I figured it would be best to have something in the imaging train to combat the gradients. And if I wasn't using the L-Pro, I was likely using a ZWO UV IR cut filter. Unfortunately, I can't remember which of these images were shot through the L-Pro and which were the UVIR cut filter. I guess that says a lot about the quality of the L-Pro because there's no noticeable difference in color reproduction or anything like that. If anything, maybe there were slightly less gradients in the L-Pro shots, but again, it's almost impossible for me to tell because I didn't keep track. Anyways, let's get into it and check out some of these shots I got. so many things that can stand in your way as an astrophotographer. Whether it's a cloudy night, bad weather, or a night wasted on troubleshooting. But these are the things that make it all worth it when that first image finally rolls in 
hits the back of your camera or computer screen for your eyes to finally take in. Just knowing how far those photons have traveled and how impossibly long it took them to get here just to hit the image sensor of my camera and create a photo truly does make me feel like a time traveler sometimes. At times it's so hard to wrap my brain around the idea that I'm looking tens or sometimes hundreds of millions of years into the past at these distant objects in our universe. I feel absolutely privileged that I get the opportunity to document some of these beautiful moments so far away in time and space. I often find myself outside smiling up at the stars with my telescope pointed out into the deep blackness of space, wondering that if in one of those galaxies far, far away, maybe there's someone else with a telescope pointed back at our own Milky Way, feeling that same sense of awe-inspiring wonder that us earthbound astrophotographers feel. I've learned that it's not about the destination. It's about the journey and how you get there. And I've discovered so much about myself along the way. It's taught me to make the most out of every clear night that I have, because tomorrow isn't promised for any of us. So here's to more clear nights, and to making many more memories along the way. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.